Well, tonight, a shift in the fight against the coronavirus here in the United States. Now, government health officials say they are continuing aggressive efforts to try to contain the virus, but they are also urging Americans to begin preparing for community spread. Dr. Frank McGeorge has been looking into this, well, I was going to say today, uh, obviously since it began, uh, but this, exactly. uh, this kind of ratchets it up to another degree. Yeah, definitely. So here's an important thing to remember. So here in the U.S., while the coronavirus numbers have increased, it's important to note that if you exclude the Diamond Prince cruise ship passengers who are flown back to the U.S., the number of cases has not increased and it still stands at 14, which buys time until a treatment or a vaccine might be developed. The immediate risk to the general American public remains low. But as we have warned, that has the potential to change quickly. The concern is that the growing spread outside of China will make it more difficult to keep the virus out of the U.S. Current global circumstances suggest it's likely that this virus will cause a pandemic. In that case, risk assessment would be different, and new strategies tailored to local circumstances would need to be implemented to blunt the impact of the disease and further slow the spread of the virus. Meanwhile, a vaccine is in the works. A biotech company in Massachusetts has sent the first batch of coronavirus vaccine to the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases in Bethesda, Maryland. There, a clinical trial is expected to begin by the end of April. The vaccine will be tested on several dozen healthy patients. You need at least three to four months to determine if it's safe and whether it induces the kind of response that you would predict would be protective. After that, it would need to undergo larger trials. That is a trial that we would have to conduct in those countries and those areas where there's active transmission. That itself, even at rocket speed, would take at least an additional six to eight months. Now, health officials urged Americans not to be discouraged by the time needed to develop a vaccine, saying there is good reason to believe this virus will continue to be an issue, frankly, beyond this season. And you will recall the H1N1 vaccine that was developed back in the days of swine flu did end up arriving in time to, to prevent many illnesses and deaths. Yeah, so a vaccine would prevent somebody from developing the illness, but what about people who are already no. sick? What is the help for them? Important point, you know, drug manufacturers do have several potential therapies in the pipeline, mm -hmm. and if they are found to be safe, their testing will likely be expedited. However, until then, the best thing that we can offer is just supportive care. So for example, if your lungs fail, we put you on a ventilator, breathe for you until you can recover on your own. Yeah, Preventatives incredible. better than curatives at this point, obviously. Definitely. Uh, now, coronavirus health concerns now creating a lot of financial concerns. Today, the Dow fell nearly 900 points on the heels of that very rough Monday yesterday. In all, about 2,000 points lost in two days. So what should you be doing to protect yourself financially? Consumer investigator Hank Winchester has been talking with the experts. Uh, worries all over the world about the financial impact here, Hank. Yeah, Devin, and people should be concerned. This is not only a global health threat, as Dr. McGeorge mentioned, but also a financial threat to everyone. Uh, the U.S. keeping a close eye on what is happening overseas right now, knowing that things could take a dramatic turn at any moment. Coronavirus concerns now affecting the bottom line financially. And as we see images overseas and learn about the threat, the concern is growing. How do we contain this? How does this all play out? The uncertainty is what's causing some markets to tumble, and it may continue. When is it going to hit here? And if it is it going to hit? And I think the unknown is really the scary part, Hank. Financial expert Tom Hakeem is keeping a close eye on how the virus is affecting the global economy. And you should be paying attention, too. I still think we're just starting to see the beginning of it. I think it can only get worse. Beyond leisure travel, business travel and shipping now being impacted. Already some major U.S. corporations restricting travel to some regions hit particularly hard by the virus. And it affects the markets because we're a global economy, um, not just travel and airlines and and all the precautions that have been taken and need to be taken and flights canceled. Uh, but you got to remember, we transport a lot of goods on those planes as well. So what should you do right now with your money? It may seem hard to do with the uncertainty, but for the most part, Hakeem says be cautious. Don't do anything drastic right now. You know, you can't be greedy. And this is just a little, kind of a warning signal. It may be time. People, you've made money, put it on the sideline. You know, stay participating to some degree, but, you know, you're going to have to wait this one out.
And Tom says, you know, beyond Corona, something else that could have a major effect on the market, the election or the election results in November. Right now, though, financial insiders say they do not believe that we are headed towards a big financial mess. Think 2008 and warn right now is a good time to be cautious with your money. Kimberly. OK, Hank, thanks. Time now for a check of the national stories you'll see ahead at 630 on NBC Nightly News. Let's get to Lester Holder standing by in New York tonight with a preview. Hey there, Lester. Hey, Devin and Kim, coming up, President Trump taking aim at the Supreme Court, demanding two liberal justices recuse themselves from cases that involve him. And ahead of the South Carolina debate and primary, we speak with Democratic candidate Tom Steyer, who sits in third place with Democratic voters in our NBC Marist poll. Yeah, and, and we actually hear that he's polling well with African-American voters, too, which is important in South Carolina. Yeah, he sits in third among African-American voters, according to our poll. Not far behind Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, but Steyer believes he can win. We'll hear from him tonight when we see you on Nightly News. A big stand for him. All right, Lester, we'll come to you in about uh, 18 minutes from now. Thanks. Ahead for us here at 6, though, there is a lot of new development going on around town. But we're going to show you the one project that has this dog and his pal so excited. And here's Jason. <laughs> There's another major closure coming to I-75 this weekend, and that is only a small part of it. Mark Wahlberg. Who was your first kiss with? Mom. Gross. Next, Ellen. Ellen, tomorrow at 3 on Local 4. They're called forever chemicals, and once these toxins enter your body, they can stay there for the rest of your life. Michigan has the most PFAS-contaminated sites